Hey everyone, I'm Alfred. Welcome back to the Jaeger Eisenweg, an Attack on Titan reread podcast, where we reread Attack on Titan. This time we've actually gotten to the real, real first chapter. Uh, to you, 2,000 years from now, or 2,000 years in the future. I've seen it translated multiple times. Um, since this is the first chapter of the volume, and in general, uh, we also have a cover to look at. The cover is fantastic. Just the shot of someone in the air using a jetpack and shit to fly. That's cool. Radical ass fucking grappling hooks and dual swords. And then a giant skinless humanoid. It's such a striking image. And the color is solid too. The background is blue and then the steam and the white of the wall makes the red giant really, really stand out. And then the beige uniform also really just almost pops against the red. It could be a little brighter, but it is also very realistic. One thing that I really like about Attack on Titan is that it is very, very much, like, placed within something adjacent to reality. It is uh, improbable that a society of this level of technology would have, you know, jetpacks and grappling hooks and stuff. But it makes sense that their technology would force forward to be this. Um, we open with that thing that we've heard a billion, billion times. You know, the human race remembered, yada, yada, yada. But really, really good image of just red skinless giant peering over the top of a wall. It's probably the most iconic thing in Attack on Titan, I would say. Just a humanoid taller than a wall looking over it and then we get a really really good shot of this is the colossal titan by the way he's called that because he's a titan and he's colossal um we get a really really good shot of his body up against the wall and you can see that he's not proportional his legs are way bigger than his like body is and his head is way smaller than his body is his body doesn't link like link up um, we get a good shot of the town. It's very neatly laid out. It's this little bubble on the edge of the wall. It makes sense. It looks cool. Um, we get a look at the wall and the sluice gates. Fantastic art. And then something really interesting. Uh, we see one footprint behind the Colossal Titan, but nothing else. So he took a step. Like, he appeared from nowhere, and then he took one step forward, and then kicked a hole in the wall. Which is... A really small detail that I really like, because that does become a thing. The Colossal Titan, in a manner of speaking, more or less does, in fact, appear from just nowhere. He just shows up, and he's there, and he's a problem now. And the fact that he only left one footprint, despite the fact that they should have been able to see him coming from miles and miles away at that size, you know, it makes sense. It makes sense that they would foreshadow it. So then we get a shot of the, the Survey Corps, I think, uh, the Vanguard, on horses running into the forest of big-ass trees and then seeing one regular-ass Titan. Um, they peel off and try to, like, do a maneuver to kill it. And they shout about teaching this thing the power of the human race. Another thing that I'm going to hear a whole lot of. Um, inevitably, they fail for some reason. I forget why. Um, like, I don't know how the Survey Corps has so high of a mortality rate. I heard that, like, 50% of anyone who joins the Survey Corps dies until, um, I think, Irwin takes the reins and it goes down to, like, only one-third of them die. But, like, isn't that a little prohibitive? Like, you would think that they would maybe slow down on it. Uh, we then cut to Aaron having a weird dream where Mikasa tells him that she'll see him later. I assume it's weird foreshadowing for paths. I don't even remember this. Um, and Aaron's also crying. And at this point, we're also introduced to Aaron and Mikasa. Uh, Aaron is our main character boy. He's a pig-headed brute who wants to get outside the walls, and Mikasa is his adoptive sister. But they're not blood-related, so it's not weird if they want to have sex. Right? Sorry, I'm salty about the ending. I should I should try to stop that. I should try to stop letting my hate 
for Attack on Titan as it became impact Attack on Titan as it is. But yeah, in this translation, he says, I had the longest dream. Not the strangest dream, but the longest one. And I'm, of course, always terrified whenever a protagonist wakes up at the beginning of a story. I'm terrified that it'll all be revealed to be a dream. But yes, um, we get some more world building. It's the year 845. Uh, humanity lives in these big-ass walls. Uh, here and there along the walls, there's these little bubbles that have towns in them to group titans up. And then there's the garrison. Um, we meet the garrison. They're more uh, titan fighter guys, much like the Survey Corps, except they just sit on the wall and hang out and watch the wall, but they're just drinking. Um, and they're like, what are you talking about? Titan's never going to show up. Which, of course, is just the thing of, like, it's so heavy-handed. It's like, what are you talking about? No one's ever performed this dangerous technique. Not even you, the protagonist, could pull off this dangerous technique. And then Naruto does the technique in, like, a day. Like, I would love for it to be, like, no one has opened this door in 10,000 years. And then the protagonist, like, looks at it, he's like, well, yeah, it makes sense. And then he just walks away and they never open the door. That would drive people nuts. That would drive people up the wall. But, like, when the when Aaron interrogates the garrison about, like, what they would do in an emergency if they're drunk off their ass, they ask him what kind of emergency, and he flips out and, like, demands to know what they would do if Titans invaded. Which, uh, according to Fat Face Man, hasn't happened in a hundred years. Uh, Aaron's dad says that it's dangerous to feel ease, and Hanez, um the primary viewpoint of the garrison, I think. He's one of the only ones named, and he returns as well. Hanez says that he's not going to second-guess Dr. Jaeger. Um, because, yes, Dr. Jaeger is uh, the only guy who has medical knowledge in this whole fucking town. Uh, he's also right about not feeling at ease, and he knows he's right um, for a whole bunch of other reasons. And then we get another really good shot of dudes on top of the wall and a titan next to it. And the titans dwarf humans, but the wall dwarfs titans. It's kind of great. Aaron compares living in the walls to being like a caged animal. That's another thing I think we're going to hear a whole lot of. The kids call him the... Kids call him a crackpot, and Aaron and Mikasa walk away. Mikasa tells him that, like, hey, it's stupid to go into a profession where literally half of them die every time. And uh, that conversation is interrupted by a big old bell ringing to signify the opening of the gate. Something I really like, you can see how mechanical the bell and its clapper is, because it's, you know, it's... Not like they have speakers or anything. They got an old-ass bell. But another thing I really like, there's a little soldier standing next to the bell who's clearly the guy ringing it, but he's covering his uh, ears with his hands. It's just a nice detail. Like, yeah, it must be fucking noisy to be standing next to a giant bell that's loud enough for the whole city to hear. Like, It's like firing a gun with your mouth. Everyone gets hyped up to see the Survey Corps. Um, Aaron's like, yeah, let's go see those heroes. Uh... And then, like, there's, like, four of them. And almost all of them are missing, like, arms and limbs and eyes. This guy, poor son of a bitch, is missing his mouth by what appears. Like, his lips got torn off or something. I'm not really sure how these injuries happened. Um, considering they had, like, one, one Titan. I really don't get the Survey Corps' massive, massive mortality rates. Like, I know that fighting Titans is dangerous, but, like, is that really the only people who... I, I just don't get it. How do so many people die? What What is the point of all the five years of training if they can't pilot the 3D maneuver gear and kill Titans with the Titan killer gear? It's so weird. So, over 100 of them set out, and there's less than 20 people here. So, let's reduce those to just the numbers. 
that's 20%, and that's a failing grade in any country, I would say. Um, so 80% of them died, at least. Possibly more. Probably more. And then some random old woman stops uh, the leader, I think. And she's like, where's my son? And he's like, uh, hey, it's, uh, it's that guy's mom. Why don't you, why don't you bring him over? And she, they hand her a little blanket with just a, with just an arm in it, just a hand. It's a really, really good shot. The penciling and the shading. Like, look at this chiaroscuro. I'm looking at the art right now. And if you're not doing that, that's fine. Because um, I'm doing my best to describe it. But, like, just pull up a shot of this. It's such a good piece of art to just, like, here's your son. What? It's a towel. Uh, yeah, it is. She unwraps it. There's just a hand. And the the... The cross hatching on it is so good. I really, really love this art. Uh, and they all freak out. And she asks if the sun was useful, which is so utilitarian. And it's like they're kind of living in a fascist government. Like, if you can, if you can take joy in something, it's at least that someone was useful. She asked if his death brought humanity one step closer to beating them back. And like, it's so. I don't know. They say humanity so many times in this with so many regards to it. And one of the guys is like, of course he helped. He, yeah, he helped. And then some, and then the guy freaks out. He's like, we accomplished nothing. He literally says, all I did was get my soldiers killed. We didn't get any close to finding out what those things really are. And then Aaron's like, boy, what an awesome job. Where the commanding officer admits that all he did was get a bunch of young, bright minds murdered. Ah, uh, the United States military. Somebody says uh, something disparaging, which is that by paying taxes and funding the soldiers, they're just giving Titan snacks. Uh, which is not really un unjustified, considering that, like... Yeah, 80% of them died on this fucking one mission. Aaron smacks him in the back of the head. Mikasa pulls him away and then throws him into a brick wall. Um, The drawing on this, like, what the fuck is she doing? Is she got, like, a power geyser? Is she, like... Let's assume that Aaron is similar to her own body weight. She throws him what looks like 10 feet away from her into a brick wall. And he's, like, a foot off the ground. What the hell is that throw? Uh, they get back. Aaron's mom is a real cutie. I forget what her name is, but like, man, she's real cute. I really love Aaron's mom. And then Aaron's dad is there too. I think his name's Grisha. Uh, Grisha has to leave, coincidentally. Uh, he has to see a patient a few towns away and won't be back. Got to see his, you know, got to go see his secret other family or something. Uh, his mom wigs out when Aaron tells her about wanting to join the survey corps. Well, Mikasa spills the beans, but Aaron confirms. Grisha is, he doesn't really care. He's like, yeah, sure, whatever. And then he promises to tell Aaron what's in the basement and jingles this little key. Um, and everyone hold on to that because that, that nugget is what gets a lot of people through the first few, like, what is it? It's like 40 chapters of Attack on Titan. It's a while of just like... Hey, what's in the basement, though? Yo, what is actually in the basement? It it really, really gets people through it. Um, and I actually got out on Attack on Titan for a little bit before the basement reveal. And then, uh, no spoilers here, by the way, in case you're reading this for the first time on this reread podcast. Um, but, so... Sorry, my brain's trying to click and nothing's happening. Uh, so I got out on Attack on Titan before the basement was revealed. And a couple of months later, well after the basement had been revealed, I asked a friend who was still in, was the basement reveal good? And he said, yes, it was. And I said, okay. And I was curious and I asked, what is in the basement? And he told me, and I marked out super hard because it changes everything, and that's super radical and amazing and super cool. And 
if somebody is out on Attack on Titan, I will now actually sometimes just tell them the basement reveal. Because it is such a good twist. Because of course it's a twist. How are they going to point to the basement and be like, something weird is in there, but you'll never find out until I get back. But yeah, Aaron's like, the people who are satisfied living like caged birds are the real fools. And it's like, I don't really like Aaron at this point. Um, I did when I was younger, but like, Aaron's a shithead, man. He looks at all this military spending and things that all it does is get bright young men killed. And he's like, wow, what heroes. Like, bro, you got better things to be doing. You're like 12. Aaron Bootlicker Jaeger, you know? Aaron's mom begs Mikasa to help him out in case of trouble. And we cut to a different friend. Um, this is the... Oh, fuck. What's the name of this town? Shinga... Shing... Shingan... Shing... Shingan... Shingan... Damn it. <clears throat> anyway. Um... We come to Armin. Armin is a new kid. Uh, he's being called a heretic. Uh, he's being beat up by a group of bullies. Armin's like, but really, I'm the one who's winning because you're the one who's beating me up. And that means that I'm winning because you had to, had to resort to violence. And it's like, well, but you do live in a world where might does in fact make right. Like, you can exert your, your, your will on the world through violence, and people have and do, and, you know, I'm bleeding, making me the victor. Jackass. He's just, Armin's kind of stupid. Nothing wrong like that, but. Aaron runs up, and uh, the bullies give no pause because they're like, cool, now we get to beat up two heretics. And then Mikasa runs up behind him and then they all shit their pants and run away. Aaron uh, congratulates himself for looking for them looking at him and running away and like, man, I don't like Aaron. But I know he gets better. I just... <sighs> Dude, this is that thing of like, this character is annoying for reasons completely separate from the reason that other characters like this would be annoying. Um, so Armin also wants to go to the outside world, but far more for scientific reasons. Whereas Aaron is like, he wants to fight Titans and do shit. Uh, they talk about Aaron getting ratted out. And then Armin says, just because the wall hasn't been breached in a hundred years, there's no guarantee they won't break through it today. For example. And then the wall gets broken through because of course, like, little on the nose but you know what that's fine whatever it is it is a very interesting um opening and it is a lot cooler in the anime they initially think it's an earthquake they run out to the main road so they can just look up uh this shot of Aaron looks like shit his head is way too big for his body Mikasa looks like the shot of Koichi from Jojo's Bizarre Adventure that became an internet meme. Uh, and then we get that same shot of the steam rising and then the hand and then the face peering over the top of the wall. And he kicks a hole in the wall and you can see his weird gross toenails. And then all the Titans come running in and that's the end of it. And like, it's pretty rad. Um, but yeah, to you, 2000 years in the future, uh, we're gonna have to wait like another 50 slash 90 chapters for that to be <laughs> explained as to what the hell that actually means. Um, but this is an excellent opening. We get so many good shots. Of just, bam, you know, this is, this is what the danger is. This is the problem. It's a really, really strong opening. Um, the world building of like, 
kind of pastoral, kind of pre World War One, um, but also almost like agrarian, not quite hunter gatherer, but like almost feudal. And then opposed with such a unusual threat. Giants are found in pretty much every single like mythology because it's a very simple one. What if man were bigger? You know? It's like how every mythology has a human that can fly or a winged human. Like, oh, bird fly. What if human have bird? Human fly. Human wing bird fly, you know? It's just a very basic mythological concept. That's why there are angels or otherwise flying humans all over the world. It's not because of ancient aliens. It's just because it's very common to see something like that and be like, what if you put dirt in the water and then that makes land? You know? It's one of those common things that, like, I don't think it's something mystical, like it's in the human collective consciousness or something. It's just very basic and primal to think of. What is a threat? Another human. They could threaten me. They could hurt me. What is something threatening if they were larger than me? How do we escalate that? Well, they're like six times your height without trying. Um, average Titans are somewhere around 5 to 15 meters tall, which is like 15 to 50 feet tall. It's uh, It's pretty stark. And like... They're called titans, um, which is a Greek term for giants, besides, you know, giants, which comes from the Greek gigantes. Uh, they really do work more like Jotun from Norse myth, and that also makes more sense well, with a character named Ymir and uh, all the Germanic stuff. But yeah, it's a... It is a very, very simple premise, and like... Shingon Shina. Yeah. Sorry, I was reading. Um, it's a very simple premise, and it just clicks, and it just fucking works. It's why Attack on Titan caught so many people, because just the shot of Aaron with the dual swords standing in Shingon Shina, and Colossus Titan is looking over the wall, and it's like, okay, guy with two swords. I get that. I understand that. Really, really big wall. Okay, I've heard of that. I'm familiar with ancient Chinese history. I, you know, I saw Mulan or something. I know that there's a big wall. And then giant skinless human. It's just such a good shot. I can't emphasize this enough. Um, and, like, it makes sense as to why they just plastered that image everywhere. Um, it's what the chapter starts and ends with. And it just reinforces this shot and this meaning what that means um the whole chapter is like yeah we're safe unless you go outside the walls and then uh colossus titan kicks a hole in the wall and it's not safe and all of it's just shooketh up it's um i still don't understand the military hierarchy and the way that they have that many casualties like in normal war, without guns, you don't really have that that many casualties. In some cases, people fight until they get tired and then go home. Like, it's not super death heavy. Sorry, I I'm, I keep getting hung up on this. But yeah, um, fantastic first chapter. Aaron sucks, but I don't. At this point, it doesn't, like, hurt me. Because there are some things where, like, it's, like, um... Oh, God. Starship Troopers. The book, not the movie. Uh, with Starship Troopers, I don't like any character, and it is the fault of the writer. Whereas, I don't like Aaron, and it is Aaron's fault, not the writer's fault. Um, because it's not that the writer is using this character to promote their views... And saying that they're right. It's that the character themselves have dumb views. And they need to work on it. Now, I'm aware of the irony of that statement. But let me just say, at this current point in time, 
Isayama is not using this manga as a way to promote his views. Right now, at least. Not from what I can see. And it's only the first chapter, and that might change literally next episode, but, you know. But yes, I've rambled for what I'm sure is long enough. Um, fantastic first chapter, great start. You can really see why this thing got everything. Um, it's good. I like it. We're going to come back for more. Um, until then, though, I have been Alfred. That's short for Alfredrick. You've been listening to Diego Reisenweg and Attack on Titan reread podcast. Um, feel free to read along yourself with it. Uh, might even do to have the chapter open. But yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Uh, thanks for listening. Bye.